Oh, welcome to the show. Um, sorry about that. Uh, things didn't connect up as it should have done at eight o'clock, so I'm a couple of three minutes late. Um, anyway, we're here now. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is, um, well, obviously this will be the last show until after New Year. Um, I'm going to take a break. And uh, the next one was scheduled for Boxing Day, but um, I think people have got better things to do than Boxing Day. I know I have. <laughs> so tonight we've got Peter Dobson on uh, on the show, and uh, he'll be talking about all things Singapore, um, the St John's School, RAF Tanga, etc. And uh, we'll start the, the show with... Um, a slideshow of his photographs, uh, mainly students that were at St John's in the late 60s. Um, and then uh, we'll get cracking with that one now. Well, I should mention also that that slideshow, the soundtrack was written by Peter. Um, it's Peter Dobson's own music, uh, which uh, he's got many talents, that man. <laughs> anyway, once again, apologies for the late start. Good to see people here. Tony, D, Kevin, Pam. Anybody else logged on? Nobody else at the moment. Although we've got quite a few viewers, only uh, a few were uh, commenting. Um, 
say hi if you're out there, and, uh, and I'll give you a mention. Anyway, um, moving on, uh, a couple of days ago when I interviewed uh, Peter, and um, yeah, it was a, a very interesting chat, and uh, I did say to him, we'll have to have him back and do a part two. <laughs> and it reminds me, if anybody else wants to uh, come on, let me know. Um, and if you want to see somebody on again, um, who we've had on, um, I'll try and arrange that. Just let me know. And, uh, okay, we'll go on with Peter's um, chat the other day. Um, welcome to the show, Pete, and uh, thank you for coming on. Um, you you arrived in Singapore when? Um, 1967. Right. And um, um, uh, about June 67, just after school had finished in Britain. Yeah. Mm, good. And uh, were, were you already into photography when that uh, when you arrived? No, I, wa- I wasn't. Um, I played in my dad's old camera, which is a little fold out one, but uh, I, w- I wasn't, you know, particularly into photography at all. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you did take uh, lots and lots of photographs of um, other pupils or students at uh, St. John's, and, and some of them are, are really good, you know. Um, so how did the, your friends feel about you going around taking photos all the time? <laughs> well, it was the, the camera. Were, uh, Dad, went, Dad bought himself a Canon, thought he'd treat himself to a brand new camera. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, he bought me an Olympus, asking what I wanted. And the Olympus was a half frame, 35 mil half frame camera. So it would take 72 on a roll of 36, oh. which meant that you could take a lot of photos without breaking the bank. Mm. Um, so it was a nice little camera. It was uh, an SLR. It was very intuitive to use, um, and I just had a blast. I suddenly, you know, suddenly developed it. Really started enjoying taking photographs. And mm. um, my friends, they get used to seeing you with a camera around your neck all the time. <laughs> so when you're pointing in their direction, you know it doesn't really bother them. It's the sort of the essence of street photography or press photography, as I found out later on. Yeah, oh, that was good because <clears throat> you got. Um about what 200 and odd of St John's pupils on your on your web page I think that, I think there's about that and you know yeah. different Singapore views and things mm. um, it, it just turned out to be you know, I, I really enjoyed taking photographs and <laughs> I found yeah. that people would actually buy them as well if I took a nice portrait of somebody they mm-hmm. said oh can I have a copy of that so I said, yeah, that, that's where I first became a professional <laughs> all right yeah <laughs> I was going to ask about that. The, um, but you also um, developed your music skills when you were there, didn't you? Yeah, it started off, we had uh, friends who played guitar, and I, and I had a guitar, but I wasn't very good at it. And, yeah. But we'd get together, and the, ones who, the couple of friends who were good um, wanted, to, wanted to get better. One night at the youth club, they said, all right, we're going to, the band that was on there, let them take over at the interval and play their instruments. Mm. And then they said, hang on, we don't have a drummer. And they looked around, Pete, <laughs> sit down there, and play those. So I'm sitting there with these, all right, what do I do? <laughs> so it was sort of a baptism of fire, just dive straight in and yeah. play, I think it was Hey Joe, and then we played... Um, the old Mr. Fantasy, that was one of the oh, old favorites we used yes. to play at the time. Yeah. And then we got into it quite seriously and we, we went down to Mike Tan Studios um, and also there was a little shack at the back of one of the campongs where the, the, some of the locals used to go and practice and we used to go and play up there as well and have fun. But, it, you know, it was a nice sort of multinational get-together. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny you should mention Mike Tan actually, because I've got a, a business card of his on the website. Um, because it's yeah, I, I yeah, I've got that. I, yeah. It may be from maybe from one of my pictures. Yeah, T- tenth story, wasn't it? Tenth story. Yeah, 
Yeah. Because he had a, he had a flat. That's right, and it was soundproofed. Story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I think I think uh, bands used to hire their gear from him as well because I seem to remember right. yeah. Yeah. him turning up at the um, what do you call it the Ark down on Ayaraja Road. Mm-hmm. Some yeah. band was having trouble with their gear, and all of a sudden he he came in, walked past me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah interesting. Yeah. So that was at Tanga Youth Club. That was Tanga Youth Club. I mean, when I got there. The youth club was in the church hall. Right. Uh, so at the at the end of Tenga Runway, on the other side from the Airman's Court, from the quarters, uh, there was the church there, which was the big triangular one. Mm. And in the church hall, that was where they had the youth club. Oh. Um, and uh, after, I think it was only about sort of six months, a year or so, they there was a building became vacant. They they. They were fed up with, I think, with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> so they found a vacant building right at the on the on the Maricorda side, right by the end of the runway, um, just past the junior school or the infant school there. Uh, so they let us have this building and said, right, it's empty. You do what you want with it, paint it. Yeah, you know, just don't wreck it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and we had we had a a guy who supervised us. Mm-hmm. But more, but yeah, you know, pretty much we had the keys and we did what we want. So we decorated it, painted all sorts of things on it, um, and that was where we had the dancers then. And, oh, excellent! And we, we get the bands coming up, and I mean Bob Simmons' band, Barbed Wire, yeah, and some of the local bands, uh, Domestic Creation, and mm-hmm. and in fact, I'm still in touch with a few of those because they're oh, still yeah. in the Singapore music scene. Oh, excellent! Yeah. Which is great, great fun to be, you know, after all these years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, amazing. I seem to remember um, that creation one. Yeah. There's a picture of it on my on my website. There is, and it yeah. Was, it was spelled domestic creation with an A. D-A-M, yeah, that's right. Not domestic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, domestic, yeah. Yeah, I do remember them. I, I, I might have seen them once. So I can't remember. But uh, I didn't recognise them from the photograph. But I do recognise the name. Right. So, uh, yeah, I obviously came across it before. Yeah, excellent. The um, so obviously you were taking photographs in the youth club and that as well. Uh, yeah, I, d- I took a few. I didn't have a very good flash though. So, oh right. Uh, it was sort of a bit hit and miss, but I I did I did my best. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, I got I got, a, got a few of those, a few of the yeah. youth club, but <laughs> it was better during the because we could go down there at weekends. Yeah, uh, you know, and spend Saturdays and Sundays messing around at youth club because that was one of the the places to go in Tango you know, to hang about. Yeah, the other, the other place was the um, veranda of the Nafi by All the right. playground, and that was where we used to hang out a lot as well. Yeah, as as well as the swimming pool, which was the centre of <laughs> social life. <laughs> That's right. I, I learned to swim at uh, Tango pool actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so did I pretty much. I couldn't swim very well, but you know, when, no, no. when you're hanging about the, the shallow end and the girls are down the deep end, you, you have to <laughs> learn to swim, swim quite quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't swim when I got to Singapore, but uh, I did learn at uh, Tangapool because I used to go up there occasionally with friends and that. But, um, yeah, interesting. The, um, yeah, yeah, uh, What's I going to say there about uh, Bob Simmons and that? Yeah, you got these photographs on your uh, page and that. I did put some yeah. of them together, uh, but mainly of the students for the slideshow, you know. But uh, certainly, uh, anybody looking at your web page or or in the photo gallery now as well, um, look it up and uh, you'll see all the other photographs with the the youth club and uh, various other bits about Singapore. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's funny how I, I look at those names and there's not a lot of them that, that I'm still in touch with. No. And I can't and I can't see them on any of the Singapore reunion lists. No. So it, you know, they sort of vanish off the face of the earth and they're not on Facebook. So <laughs> you wonder where did they go? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's uh, it's amazing. Uh and then when one does pop up, you know, it's it's amazing to to get in touch with them again but um yeah there's so many people pass through and 
and went their own way. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. The um so yeah, your photography, you, you you did turn professional in the end. Um so what happened after Singapore? Did you uh... Well <laughs> I did my three A levels in Singapore at St. Yeah. John, which was physics, chemistry and biology. Uh and I wanted to do a degree in psychology because I was interested in how people tick. Yeah. But my grades weren't good enough for the psychology degree, but they are, the clearinghouse offered me a place in, in botany, doing botany at Swansea University. So I thought, oh, you know, David Bellamy traipsing around the jungle <laughs> looking for exotic orchids. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. So I headed off to Swansea University uh, and the first year there was split into chemistry and um, botany and what was it, the others? Chemistry, botany. But basically, it wasn't like I imagined it. And the oh. chemistry was so difficult. Right. That there was a big interdepartmental inter row. That the chemists thought the biologists should learn chemistry properly, whereas the, the botany, they didn't need chemistry to the degree that they were trying to teach it. So <laughs> basically, all us would-be botanists failed the chemistry. Oh. <laughs> So at the end of the year, we had the option, retake the year again or leave and find something else. So I thought, well, <clears throat> it's not quite what I imagined botany mm. was going to be. So I went to the career guidance guy and he said, all right, we'll do a basic aptitude test with you, which just div divide, just shows you three, a three areas and see which one you score most in. And it divided you into literary scientific and artistic so i, I did the, did the test and he scored it he goes hmm you've got 33 percent in each one <laughs> so, he says so what do you want to do and i said well that's why i'm here you tell me so he said well <clears throat> teaching and i go no 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 <laughs> he said geography we get you into a ge geography degree no uh, we, and we battered back that backwards and forwards possibilities. Mm. And he says, hmm, all right, so what, what do you do for a hobby? What are your hobbies? And I said, well, like reading, drinking beer, uh, <laughs> girls, um, read, oh, I uh, play chess. Uh, oh, I like to take, photo uh, I, I like photography. I do a lot of photographs. He says, well, there you are. He says, become a professional photographer. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I thought, all right, that sounds quite good. <laughs> and then I remembered the film. Do you remember the film Blow Up? Oh, yes. David yeah. Hemmings, where he's wrestling naked, wrestling with... Uh, <laughs> two young girls. The two models. Jane Birkin <laughs> was one of them. The two models in the role of background yeah. paper. And I think that yeah, that's a job for me. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> he found me a job doing scientific photography at uh, North East London Polytechnic oh, down right. in Barking. Um, so that fitted in with my science background. Um, uh, so that was it. It was a three year course there, it was a sandwich course. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was, you know, we were learning the big plate cameras. They're huge. <laughs> Everything was in five fours. We didn't right. touch 120 or 35 mil because we were producing images for scientists. We were producing, learning how to do high quality advertising or you know anything to do with photography we learned mm. in the three years there so mm. that's how I got to be <laughs> into <laughs> photography you know, at the end of that I got a job as a photographer at Porton Down uh, near Salisbury you know, the, the yeah. government place <laughs> so mm. then from there I moved I got fed up of working for other people I thought all right quite like the work for myself. So we moved yeah. back to my wife's hometown of Machantliff in yeah. mid Wales. And I tried earning my, you know, making a living there. Yeah. It was, it was hard to start with. I had to get a part-time job. Well, I got a full-time job to support the part-time photography, <laughs> but eventually I earned enough to be able to set up on my own totally. So oh, excellent. After that, I've, you know, I've earned my, living through photography ever since. Mm, so, so you're in America now. That was a big move, was it? 
It's a very big move. There was um, a, a divorce involved back in Wales. Yeah. Um, the so I continued, you know, doing my photography, and about a year after that, I, I got into the internet, mm. and I really got into the le legend of a Welsh guy called Prince Madog Ab Owain Gwynedd. Um, <laughs> And he land, he sailed and landed in America with three ships in 1170. Oh. So I started researching this a little bit more. There's a, an awful lot of uh, material about his trips. And he landed at Mobile in Alabama. Mm -hmm. And then he went back to Wales and got another 10 and came back again with another 10 ships. And oh. this was in 1172 AD way, way, way before Columbus, but yeah. you know, so Columbus had the better PR agent. <laughs> well, but, that's uh, I thought I'd do some, uh, this would make a great coffee table book. Mm. And as my various internet friends in the USA have been saying, yeah, bro, yeah, but come over here. You, know, you be sure to come sail this boy. <laughs> so <laughs> the, I made a list of them and I traveled from Mobile all the way up to Connecticut, where there was a, a, a nice um, one of the big casinos up there. Right. Had a, a very famous collection of Indian artifacts and things. So they gave me permission to photograph that. So I went, started at Mobile, and then just stayed with various internet friends all the way up to Connecticut, <laughs> um, taking photographs on the way. And the, one of the people I stayed with was. Uh, we got on quite well <laughs> so yeah. we, we swapped visits and backwards and forwards and then eventually it said well look at you know, it makes more sense to you know we're going to get together so it made more sense for me to go over, come over to here mm. to Columbus um but of course then she, you know it's easy easy to get a work permit uh, and your social security number <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. She made, she made me work, so I couldn't be a kept man, which was unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh, so then, you know, it was, you know, finding, finding work over here. So I got a job with a yeah. local TV station, doing running cameras and running sound and yeah. um, great fun. And then it was after that, then I got a job with a defense contractor. Mm -hmm. And that, that was... Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, salary. You think, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and no. I, was, I was with them for eight years and I was taken on, on board. It was a smallish company. Mm -hmm. um, um, they were doing a lot of teaching materials for the infantry, which is at Fort Benning, which is about you know, 50 miles south, of, you know, yeah. attached to Columbus, basically. So it, the idea was to use electronic means to supplement the, the physical training that they'd have. Mm. And it would also, so they could sit down and play the equivalent of a computer game or do some computer lessons on their laptops uh, by themselves, which could be scored rather than take up the time of you know, sergeant majors and other staff who could then concentrate on the more you know, physical things later. So yeah. Uh, so I was shoot. I got involved in shooting stills, doing making videos for the army. Their training videos, helping develop um, computer games and computer courses and lessons. Mm -hmm. And it was very much a case of learn as le learn on your feet as you go. Simply because if the boss said, you know, is it possible to do something, Peter? And you go, oh yes, oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Because <laughs> you never said you never said no to to no. Ex ex kernels. <laughs> well, I can do it, yeah. And then you go spend <laughs> work out how to do it, and after that, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, great, great fun. And you know, I I really yeah. enjoyed working with the military. You know, yeah. with the, uh, particularly, you know, they they let me play with things that go bang. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Oh, excellent. So. Um... Now, of course, you, you're uh, fully established and, and retired now, aren't you? Uh, but you yeah, have well, a, they, a book out, or a, a couple of 
two books actually. One your your dad's memory, and uh, one of your own. <clears throat> well, my, my dad's memoirs. We persuaded him to write because he had all these wonderful stories about you know life on the farm, life under stairs, and then life in the RAF and World mm. War Two. Yeah, tremendous amount of stories. So we, we kept saying, write them down, write them down. Uh, and you talk to people and you say that everybody's got stories, mm. but not everybody makes the effort to write them down. And it's so important to write your stories down, uh, not for necessarily for your kids or your own benefit, but for grandkids and their great grandkids and so on, because you know everybody has a great story to tell. Everybody's unique. Yeah, their experience in life, and so we got dad to tie out his memoirs, and he couldn't find an agent or anything that was interested in publishing them, so he just made five manuscript copies for each of the grandkids, mm -hmm. and we called it Granddad's Book. So when I inherited that the master manuscript with the photographs, I decided to scan it into Word, add all the photographs, and publish it on Amazon. I called it Granddad's Book from biplanes to Concord because he, re he reckoned that he'd, re he'd wrote, um, been in every type of different plane from the original biplanes right through to Concord. <laughs> <laughs> Good, yeah. And then after, when I retired, I thought, right, well, I'll do my own book because it's, it was 50 years since I got my first camera, which was that Olympus Pen FT. Mm. And having started with film, and gone through all sorts of different cameras, right through to plate cameras and the whole works and lots of different types of photography. Yeah. Um, I thought, well, I, you know, it might be worth writing all this down because it's a unique experience to me. Mm. Uh, and then after film, I went through to digital and computers and took it, you know, to high end graphics and all the rest of it, 3D graphics and that sort of thing. So I went all the way through over the 50 years from film to <laughs> di digital and beyond and, mm. you know, right through to the smartphone, finally. <laughs> Excellent. So, yeah, yeah, this book actually is, is out now on Amazon as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's called Search, uh, Catch, Catch Light. It's called it's called Catch Light. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, well, obviously, I'll put a link to these uh, books on uh, in the comments column at the end of the show, and uh, so other people can uh, check them out. So excellent. Well, thanks very much for uh, taking part. And uh, it's all the stories. Though, that this is the you know we were so lucky to have lived in Singapore as teenagers. Right, yeah. I mean, it was absolute, totally magical experience. Mm. Um, you know, you, you got young brains absorbing, and you know, Singapore is just a fabulous place. Yeah. Um, and, with, and I think everybody, when you read the sites, they all say, you know, those three years were the best of their lives. <laughs> mm, that's true. That yeah. And was... I mean, when we came back to Britain, it was just everything was blur. Great. <laughs> what have I come back to? <laughs> I want to go back to Singapore. <laughs> no, I was I was disappointed when I came back in '69. I expected all this uh, flower power and hippie stuff, and uh, and everybody was still wearing jeans and going to work and things like that. You know. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it was it was a complete letdown. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Anyway, thanks again, uh, Peter, and. Uh, I'll wish you a Merry Christmas now. <laughs> I wish you a Merry Christmas. And and in Welsh, for the, any Welsh people, Nadolig Slau and Ichi. Excellent. Well, that was uh, and good, that. I enjoyed that. Um, while that was playing, I was having a few technical problems because I can't actually see the comments now for some reason. Um, I hope you are all, all receiving me well. Um, never mind we'll continue the show um it will be recorded so um i'll post it on uh youtube and and on the website and uh, in the various uh groups on um facebook um so 
all it leads me to do actually is uh, finish the program with the last uh, slideshow which what I've done this time um, I put together any Christmassy photos that were on the site um, usually kiddies parties and that and put them together with uh, Roy Wood and Wizard and uh, and their Christmas song um, which it could be Christmas every day now the only problem is YouTube or Facebook might mute it or block it because it would be a copyright infringement but uh, I've done a test and they seem to let me get away with it <laughs> they've warned me but uh, everything should be okay so um, it just leads me to wish you uh, a Merry Christmas and a Happy and Prosperous New Year and uh, I shall see you in January